How's it going everyone? Aldrin Astacio here with FlightPath.com. Now for the past couple weeks, I've been able to fly and test this thing out. This is the Mavic 3 Enterprise or Mavic 3E. There's also another one, which is the thermal camera Mavic 3. I don't have that one, but I was able to test this one out. And for those familiar with my channel, you guys know I did a lot of Mavic 2 Enterprise testing with the thermal camera on that one, the speaker, the uh, light and uh, the floodlight that it had on the Mavic 2. I did a bunch of videos on those. If you guys haven't seen those, I'll make sure those are linked above as well as down below in the video description. Now when this drone released, I definitely was excited about it because there's things on here that I wasn't able to do as much. I wasn't able to do that much mapping as well as 3D modeling with some of the previous drones. And I was now able to do that with this one. Now when I first unboxed the Mavic 3E, of course, as you can see, form factor wise, almost everything identical to the standard Mavic 3, this Mavic 3 as well as the Mavic 3 Cine. Everything looks familiar except for a couple things here. On the right top of the drone, we do have this USB-C port where you're able to put on a few different modules. The modules that they do have, which are actually sold separately from the standard kit, they have the RTK module, which is right here. And they also have a speaker module that will go right on top. When I was thinking back to the Mavic 2, I was kind of thinking that there was another one that we were missing, but what they did here was they integrated the beacon into the body of the Mavic 3E. So before it used to be a separate module, now it's actually built into the drone. And if you already do have a Mavic 3 or a Mavic 3 Cine, just know that you can actually use the batteries from those drones in the thermal as well as the Enterprise. Also the propellers are interchangeable with the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Enterprise. However, the Mavic 3 Enterprise propellers are a little bit stiffer than the original Mavic 3 props. Which is a good thing because if you are familiar with the Mavic 3 batteries, these things last a long time. Rated for 45 minutes, but of course, depending on how hard you're flying, the weather conditions, you, that of course will drop. So expect probably around a 30, 35 minute solid flight time out of this battery. Another new feature that came in the box is this new gimbal cover. It's more of a clear kind of smoked plexi that just goes right on top, hook it on the bottom, and then it just covers up the front sensor. So you don't have that full kind of holster one that we did on the standard Mavic 3, which is good and bad. I mean, this is pretty simple here, uh, but you also don't have the covering that we do on the other one where you cover all the sensors and cover the sensors here at the bottom. The one thing they do include in the box though is this right here, a brand new 100 watt charger. You want to hook it up to this right here, which is the battery hub. Each one of the batteries, when hooked up to this charger, it will charge in about a little bit over an hour, hour and 10 minutes per battery when hooked up here. There is two USB-C slots here on the front. So if you wanted to hook up your hub to charge up your batteries, as well as another cord here to charge up your RC Pro, you are able to do that on this battery brick. Also, if you don't want to charge through the hub, you can actually plug directly to the back of the Mavic 3E, plug it directly to the drone and you can charge the battery that way. And speaking of the remote control, this is the RC Pro Enterprise, which looks very similar, pretty much identical to the standard RC Pro. This one of course has some bumped up specs internally, but this one right here does have a built-in microphone because you're gonna need to speak into that microphone to record some audio clips if you wanna pump that through that speaker attachment that's available for the Enterprise version. And for those not familiar with the RTK, once you have this hooked up here via the USB-C port on the very top, plugged in, and also when this is hooked up to a base station, you'll be able to achieve centimeter accuracy with this module. Now when it comes to the camera system, we do have something similar to what we have on the Mavic 3 with the dual cameras. However, there is one change on here that is extremely important when it comes to mapping and surveying, and we'll talk about that in a second. The bottom of the two cameras is the wider camera, which is a four over three inch CMOS sensor camera, which also has an adjustable aperture from 2.8 all the way to F11. And the top camera is the tele camera, which is a half inch CMOS sensor, but more importantly has a 56 times hybrid zoom on that top camera. Now jumping back to the bottom camera, we now have a mechanical shutter on the Mavic 3E. This is something a lot of people have been waiting for because we haven't had this since the Phantom 4 RTK came out. I believe it's about three to four years ago. We now have a mechanical shutter on the Mavic 3E. And one of the biggest benefits of that mechanical shutter is it does reduce the amount of rolling shutter you get 
when you're out there shooting. This is a big change on the Mavic 3E because when it comes to interval shooting, you're now able to do interval shooting at 0.7 seconds. Now, why is that such a big deal? Because the faster intervals as well as the mechanical shutter allow you to actually move and fly the drone quicker in the air. By flying this a little bit quicker as well as not having to worry about rolling shutter, you are now able to cover a lot more area when you're doing your mapping or modeling. Now, when it comes to drone mapping and modeling, I'm definitely not gonna speak as though I've been doing it for a while because I haven't. However, I will tell you this. Initially, I felt like it was a very intimidating space to get into because there is definitely a lot of things to know once you open up the app. You can pretty much customize everything about your flight in the app, as well as when you're doing the processing. I was doing all the processing of my photos in DJI Terra. There's so many ways to break down the data in that app that I honestly could not get that far into it, but just to set up a basic mission through the remote and also process it through their software was honestly pretty straightforward. The one hurdle I did run into when I wanted to process my stuff is that DJI Terra is actually made for the PC and not the Mac. All my computers are Mac and I don't have anything like a VM. I don't have a virtual machine on my Mac. So I did have to pick up a PC in order for me to install DJI Terra as well as run the software. Now, as far as use cases go here in San Diego, one of the places that came to mind first is the coastline. For those that live here in California, you guys are familiar with the coastline as far as the train goes or the coaster goes. The tracks are so close to the hillside that it is eroding. The tracks and the hillside is eroding all the way down our coastline. So when I did get a chance to take out the Enterprise drone, that was the first thing that came to mind. I actually went there before just to document it with my regular drones as far as shooting video goes, but now I was able to do it with something like this. I was able to bring this drone out there and create a full 3D model of that coastline where I know we always have a lot of issues. I didn't know exactly what to expect once I did the photos, did the mission, and brought it back into the software of how it would really look. But as you can see here from my initial missions, I am pretty happy with just how well it builds that 3D model of the coastline, the homes around it. You can see the tracks right there. Having a 3D model like this versus just a standard video, you're able to now see over time how much the landscape is changing. And once you run that mission, the great thing, of course, you just jump back into the flight route, which is already saved in there. So if you wanted to come back six months from now, a year from now, run the same mission, then you could put those models next to each other to see how much, or I could, I'd be able to see how much the hillside has been changing over time. I also have a lot of new home development here up on the hillside, which I've been documenting just by doing videos and photos. But now with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, I took the drone up there. I was able to do a full model of that whole new cul-de-sac, the whole new area that's being developed. And with that model, I'm able to see things that you don't normally see with a standard video. I'm actually able to see the different elevations of height within in each block. These are things that you just don't really see, of course, unless you're flying really, really close to it. But most of the time I'm just kind of doing routes around the neighborhood. But now I'm able to do that. I'm able to do a full 3D model. And by doing that, you can actually zoom in, move everything around and see the different elevations and heights. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the first time I'm really diving into this space as far as mapping and modeling goes. But honestly, the way DJI has everything set up, it is pretty straightforward because there's a ton of instructions of what to do when you're actually setting up your mission. Also the DJI Terra app, having just to import the folder, it'll automatically pretty much generate it depending on what you want to do. You want to look at it in 2D, you want to look at it in 3D, and then you just actually compose it and generate it and it'll run. It actually takes a, quite a, a long time for it to process. So you definitely want to have a powerful PC to process it because depending on how big your mission is, most of mine were about, I'd say around 300 photos or so. So that whole processing time to actually create that 3D model does take some time. Most of mine actually took, I'd probably say anywhere between an hour or so to process that full model. But of course that time frame will change based on how big of an area you are mapping. It could be a lot smaller than mine or it could be a lot bigger because you can actually do a lot bigger ones with the longer battery life. The small compact size of the 3E, especially compared to something like the Phantom 4, makes it a lot easier now if you wanted to get out there and get into this space. Now, as far as price goes, if you're looking at picking up what I showed you today, the Mavic 3E, it starts at 3810. And if you're looking at getting into thermal, that starts at 5780. Of course, I'll leave all links to these products down below in the video description. So if you're looking at getting into mapping and modeling, I don't think it comes much easier than this. 
Of course, once you get the whole system set up with the software with DJI Terra or whichever software you plan on using. I will definitely be taking this thing out to get a bunch more spots, but if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Alter Stasio with FlightPath.com. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.